and he breaks free down the middle of the field, and that is going to be no K. one K. other Smith. than K.J. Smith, K. J. and he's Smith. in for a touchdown. The Bulldog Radio Network proudly presents the Coach Gray Show on 102.7 FM, Carney's hometown radio station. And now, here are the hosts of the show, Mike Davis, Jim Dickerson, and Coach Josh Gray. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. I don't know what I'm most excited about, that we have an, another opportunity for a, to win a football game Friday night, or that Jim Dickerson is here, right here, right next to me. Yep. I know he's there. He is. It's a privilege <laughs> yep. to be here. I'm glad to serve in any way that I can. Oh, thank you, Jim. I know that uh, that is that's your goal in life. Uh, servant leadership, they say. I'm, I'm not, not sure. I'm you... not a smart man, but I know what football is. American football. I'm not a smart man, <laughs> but I know what love is. Well, the wording was wrong, but the concept was there. I so like we got that, that going for us. Uh, and Back we have to you, Mike. Well, I just wanted to welcome the namesake of this show, the most popular man in Kearney, Missouri, for the moment. Thanks, man. I Coach Gray is with us. Wait. Josh Gray. <laughs> How we doing? <laughs> Good to be here as always. <laughs> oh man. When Coach okay. walked in this morning, I said, you know, some days I tell my wife, honey, it's hard being me. It's hard to be me. And uh, when I saw Coach Gray, I realized, nope, there, there, are, there are people that I don't want to be at certain times. It might, might have been. Might have been I Coach. Thought, I, I don't know. it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I know I do. Uh, We're not going to talk about uh, any stupid stuff that's going on in the media. I can guarantee you that. I'm not having none of that. Uh, yep. Hip, hip. Because, uh, you know, there are those who uh, wallow in their 15 minutes of fame. But, boy, let me tell you something. When it goes one minute past your 15 minutes of fame, I am saying uh, that's enough. So uh, we are having none of that on this radio station. So You just, you just spent two minutes talking. I didn't it. talk about anybody in particular, <laughs> Jim. I think that we, we have a – that is our philosophy, and I think – and I don't mind – saying it uh coach welcome to the show Thank and you. uh and and by the way uh we saw signs of life believe me yeah, not on the field yes against smithville a very good team 35 to nothing lost yes uh but we saw a lot of things that were even when uh, when you guys went in a halftime i mean there was we, we were looking at okay what are we going to talk about at halftime well what i saw was an offense that it looked like a, a fast tempo offense, and it was really cool because I think you were catching them off guard. You were making a lot of good moves that uh, that got the ball downfield. Talk about that. Yeah. Was that by design or was I just imagining? No, you're you're exactly right. I thought we played you know from week one to week two for us. We grew a lot, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, I think uh, offensively we were able to move the ball. I think you know as a team as a whole. Uh, we got better over the week, and that was the main the main piece from week one to week two is to continue to get better. Uh, I think our guys did. We moved the ball well. I think defensively we played well. Um, you know, I think our there was some some really good things to take away from that game, and that's you know the big piece of you know when you lose is all right, fix the things that we are able to fix, yeah. all right, and um, and focus on the good things that we we did and continue to to roll with that and. You know, I think our offensive line played well. I think um, running-wise, I think we did well. You know, Ian throwing the ball. You know, I think overall we grew as a team from week one to week two, and, and I know that the score, you know, is, doesn't look indicative of that, but I really think um, we we came out and we played a pretty good game. We just didn't get, you know, didn't, didn't finish the deal, and, you know, we had some scoring opportunities. Some things didn't go our way. Uh, we get the ball down on the on the you know down almost ready to score and I mean there's a, a few mishaps and you know those are things that that you know in the game of football happen and we just got to eliminate those going forward and you know um, not to ramble but you know I think a lot of the the things that our guys that that we worked on this week was was being persistent and and those things that we've 
maybe done the, the last couple of weeks or the things that have happened over the last couple of weeks with, you know, whether it's injuries or whether it's anything else that's going on, you know, we've got to, that makes us, makes us stronger in the long run. Um, I think the competition piece, we've, we've faced some really good competition, which is going to make us better in the long run. Um, our schedule is, is kind of set up that way. So, you know, we're taking the positives out of that and, and growing. And, you know, that's that's what you want. And, you know, it's really early in the season. And I think these things that, that we've endured and persevered through, um, the obstacles that we've went through and, and not back down, um, I think is, is going to make us stronger down, down throughout the season and once we get into the playoffs. And and I think this team, you know, um, as, the, as the team talked, and, and obviously when you're, you know, you, you want to get a feel for everybody and, and how they're doing mentally. And, you know, you, you tell them not to listen to the noise, the exterior noise that's outside. You know, it's it's what's in that locker room. And, and our guys are mentally tough and we're strong. And, you know, they, they understand what needs to what needs to happen. And um, so, yeah, it's been, you know, uh, uh, I know I come on here and I tell you it's been a good week of practice. Well, it has been, and we've gotten better over these these last few weeks. And it, and it showed this week in practice um, our, our, our guys are doing what they need to do in preparation each, each week. And, and we got Ruskin coming up on uh, Friday, which is tomorrow. Um, and, you know, we're, we're ready for that. And I just truly believe and our guys believe and buy in to understand that, by golly, you know, this is not going to define us and this is not who we are and we're going to continue to get better and we're going to persevere through and, and uh, you know, it's not, it's not who we are and, and we're going to fix the things that we need to fix. And, and, and we saw that from week one, week two, bottom line. Well, and so just talk about the outside noise for just a second, yeah. because we, we get the emails or not the emails. We see the texts and we get them and people ask us questions and all yeah. that. Not as many as you get probably, but, uh, so one of the things that people don't, I think, I don't think they understand and we try to help explain. So when you look just straight at the score, score to score, it's not like say the NFL where everybody, because you're, you're playing different class. Now, personally, I've never understood why they do that sometimes. So even at the college level, you'll have MU playing South River. Yeah, the non non conference schedules. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, well, I don't even under so. But you're playing in a you're you're playing a different class level, which makes a difference. And And Smithville's in our class, but but Platte County is not correct. Um, so that makes a difference, right? Um, and then. so we, we, we try to explain, you know, that. And then you guys lost the game up front, so these teams are actually a week ahead of you in as far as real live game practice and that sort of thing. Plus, they had the Jamboree, and you didn't. Before, I mean, you were there, but it, you played your JV guys. Right. So there's all these little things that you – that's just outside – things that you you lose track of because people are like well that's yeah and you know to kind of answer that a little bit i think um you know there's times we should play better and and that's you know and and the score is the score and and did we make mistakes yeah but the but i think again i go back to week one to week two we improved immensely on a lot of things uh across the board um i I think our tackling was better i think some of the uh just i think defensively um, I think our special teams is 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 grooving. I think offensively, we're starting to see those things that you need to see happen to win the ball game. And you know, uh, obviously, we don't we we practice every week, and and you know, our guys work their tails off, and the coaches work their tails off, uh, and t- to be ready to play. And and you know, I, I think our guys are. I, I think, um, you know, I think it it comes down to. Uh, Everybody doing their job on every single play, um, whatever side of the ball that is, or whatever's going on, and whenever the ball is snapped, that they're doing their job and they're executing at a high level. And they're, um, and the high level we talk about being perfect, and being perfect is giving 100 percent effort and knowing what you're doing and making sure that you're dialed in at that particular moment. And you know, I think we continue to to grow in that area. And um, you know, this team is a is a very resilient team. Um, they aren't going to back down from anybody. And I think that showed last Friday and just, you know, obviously we didn't, we didn't score enough points. We didn't, I mean, we didn't score and that's, you know, I don't think that is a, a, a tale of our offense of, of any of that, you know, what our offense is like or what, you know, what we're doing or, 
you know, anything like that. I think, um, you know, it, it's, you know, on offense, it's get the ball, hand the ball off, block your guy, catch a pass, all those things. And right. at, at some point in time throughout the game, you know, we're driving the ball and then maybe, you know, one or two guys have a mental error or they, you know, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you're not, you're not going to do that and beat teams of that caliber right? Um, and, and do that where you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot in, in, in opportune times. And, um, but like I said, our guys, our kids are, are a tremendous group of kids. Um, our team is, uh, comes out and they're fired up at practice. They're fired up in our me. I mean, it, it's, it, it, I can't say enough about our guys and, and what they, what they do and what a great group they are. Um, and, and their work ethic and the things that they want to do and they want to be successful and they want to do it. And, you know, I think sometimes they get, it, it becomes difficult because then they start to listen to other people instead of understand that they're, hey, you're putting in a lot of dang work yeah. and you're doing the right things. All right. We are getting better of where we're at. So, you know, and that comes with it. And that, you know, when we talk about all that stuff of, of, uh, you know, our, our weekly, our weekly, uh, focus, um, those things we try to highlight to make them understand what it is they're doing is right and to not listen to, man, you guys are this or you're that or, you know, all those things, that exterior noise that, you know, it's because of this or that. And that's great. We've got a great community and we have got great support. Um, bottom line, we, we really do. And, it, and this is a great place. And, um, but they just got to understand that, that people expect a lot. And that's that. Everybody wants you to be successful, and they're you know yeah, trying I mean, to find out why. Or, it would you know? be worse if it was the other way around. Yeah. If no one said anything. Yeah. Like, well, who cares? I mean, right. it shows they care. Right. They care and about the team, and what, they want them to do well. Absolutely. Hey, Jim, there are there are teams on our schedule uh, who have that nature of no, a no, fan that's base. Absolutely correct. They don't and care. They don't, and uh, and and those kids know it. They they're yeah. they're aware of it. But I also think our our kids know the support that they have in this community. Yeah. That's which right. is which is a good thing. Which is awesome. Right. And right. it was a great crowd. It was it, it was no uh, doubt about it. It was it, yeah, it was but you good. know that outside noise too is we've talked we talk about life lessons and that. Oh yeah. I mean, you're gonna get that for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's right. You got that joy <laughs> to look forward to. <laughs> right. You know, and, and and the bottom line is you keep your nose to the grindstone and you keep battling and you keep doing what you do and trust and believe in yourself and believe in in everything that you're doing and and that's it's got to be that way i mean and like you said later in life you're gonna, you're gonna deal with it and you know like i told him on uh, saturday i was like you know hey uh went through a few things good film session showed a lot of great things that we did showed the things that we need to improve on um and then monday hey it's back to work we yeah. it's time to go it's it's move on, and we got to get ready for Ruskin. And um, you know, it's been a, it's been a good week. Yeah, and there were some. I, I don't know if you were going to get to this, Mike, in a second, but the, you talk about key turning points in the game because you guys. One of the things I noticed from uh, change from Platte County to Smithville, and a lot of it might just be repetition and all, but the play seemed to be coming in quicker and off quicker. So. Yep. There were a lot of delay of games in the Platt County right. game, and we even when we were snapping, there was like one second left on the play clock. Uh, last week, it looked like everything was happening a lot quicker. Right. And that first, I think it was the first position, all the way down the field, and then you had the, the was it Ariano? It bounced off his. Yeah, I was just. But that was at the one-yard line, and I mean march down. If, they, if you had scored then. Um, <laughs> after I saw, I I wish well, we you had know, you on that, camera when I that, the, the, that look you know, on your face, yeah, coach. But, yeah. that, that changes the whole night, and I it's not an excuse, but I'm right. saying uh, it, it was it it's a was, momentum what killer. Was, what was yeah. the halftime score? Yeah. I can't remember. Fourteen. Okay, yeah. fourteen. But they scored when they came back down the other way. Right. But if you had scored, you take the seven and convert. It's you know, a and you can. I mean, I it know is. You can, can all. You can always go all the ifs, ands, but yeah. I mean, Logan Ariano is a great receiver, um, and you know, I think uh, that. And and we talked about it. Man, that's a. You, you're in great position coming back. Yes. I mean, that, mm-hmm. that ain't on him. I mean, that that sometimes those things happen. And uh, what a great kid he is, and he's. Uh, comes back and just uh, works hard and makes some unbelievable catches and is a speed demon and a huge threat. And we've got a lot of huge threats. You know, I think 
Uh, uh, Hayden Douglas is another one. I mean, talk about our wide receivers. We've, we've got some dandies. And, um, you know, I, I think and Logan's uh, a strong kid and has uh, got a strong, a great athlete and, and does a great job for us. Uh, no doubt about that. I want to, uh, by the way, talk about the uh, – well, for starters, let's talk about our stables, 102.7 FM player of the game, and uh, that is uh, Keenan McNally. Uh, all 6'10", 280 pounds of him, uh, who, and, and, you know, uh, we had a question, Jim, uh, from uh, one of the uh, parents who asked us how we, we select uh, the player of the game. And uh, and because we don't always, oftentimes they overlap mm-hmm. what you guys do. And I want to uh, make sure I talk about those guys, too, the four that you've selected uh, as players of the week. Now, we just get, we, we select one. Uh, it does overlap periodically, and sometimes, yes, it has everything to do with a particular play or plays, or in the case of K.J. Smith against Platt County. I mean, let's just face it, the guy was just, he was a, he was a nightmare for uh, Platt County. I mean, with his 138 yards, 134 yards, whatever it was, amazing, nearly six yards of carry. I mean, come on, that, it's pretty obvious, in a, in a player of the game at a time like that. But on a 35 to nothing loss, you're looking around and you're going, okay, there, we, we saw lots of fantastic plays, and we'll cover a, a few of them here. But one of the things that w- why we came to the conclusion for Keenan was we saw two things. Uh, I think more than once I commented on the fact that he was leading the downfield blocking on, on run plays. He was downfield. That's this big lumbering guy, the 6'10", 280. And uh, he's out front knocking people down so that we can move the ball on the ground. Uh, the other thing we noticed was, uh, Jim, help me with the name, number 28, the, the guy we talked uh, about. Sig. Him. Yeah, yeah, Sig, the, the, the running back. from uh, Terrific guy, great player on Smithville. And Keenan wrapped him up on, a, on a, a, what looked to be a, he, was, he was gone, for, except Keenan drove him back five yards or more. And in fact, I noticed that the official came over and said something to Keenan. I mean, <laughs> Keenan could have thrown him down, but he didn't. But I think they may have said, I would like to know if you know what the official said to him. But it was a great play on defense. I feel like you know uh, that you're not allowed. I you don't. I don't know. <laughs> I really. You're making me laugh. That makes you look. Uh, well, I don't know. I, 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 I think was wondering if he. They had blowed the whistle, and Keenan was still running his feet. Uh, okay. and oh, I think it was right. something like All that. Right. Okay. Possibly. I we did so we didn't hear the whistle. I don't have a mic. Unfortunately, I don't have an earpiece with a mic to the official. Well, well I thought maybe he might have said something <laughs> to you. Kind of yeah, I thought the, the official the either might have said something to you or Keenan yeah, might have. We yeah. never. We never heard the whistle. Which was right, our right. thing, and we that, were like, so uh, you know, yeah. and he could have just kept driving him down to Utah. <laughs> and we thought we thought he was generous in his handling at the time yeah. because you know, yeah, right. Keenan is. Um, I don't know if you are aware of this, but he's not small. And, do, do, uh, you, do you guys want to take a break? Let's come back and talk about him. Let's 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 take the break now and let's talk about Keenan. And then I want to mention these other guys. You're listening to the Coach Gray Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Programming heard on KPGZ is being underwritten and supported by these local businesses. I'm Sean Barber, owner of Stables Local Kitchen and Patio in Kearney. Stables is a Kearney thing. We are all about our Kearney community. We love to be the place where people get together. Stables features a full menu with a scratch kitchen, offering lunch and dinner options. Stables has been a proud member of the Kearney community for almost 20 years, and we are very appreciative of the ongoing support from this wonderful community. You can check us out online at stables816.com, and Stables is part of the True 816 family. Eat, drink, local. Celebrate fall with the Holiday Trio. Bees Flowers and Gifts is offering three months of unique flower arrangements to share and celebrate those special months of October, November, and December. Each bouquet features a seasonally themed assortment delivered in a charming holiday vase. The Holiday Trio is now available at Bees Flowers and Gifts. 
100 West Washington Street in Kearney, 816-628-6811. And their website is beesflowers.com. Bees, your first choice for flowers. I love the Coach Gray Show. That's what you're listening to. I'm your host, Mike Davis, along with uh, producer engineer Brian Watts, who is uh, driving the driving the program. He's got he's got the bus rolling down the road and uh, making making things look easy. Right? You don't look scared at all. No, you were earlier, weren't you? A little bit nervous. No, he doesn't get nervous. He's that kind of guy. He's a pro. And Jim Dickerson is with me, and I am so happy about that. I could could have used you yesterday too it was, a, it was a tough tough day in the old radio show but uh we got through it didn't we brian and uh, and of course coach gray okay we were just talking about keenan mcnally and uh he was our he is our stables player of the week and uh jim i'm gonna let you handle this because i think the the you you responded to the the parent who just asked it about it and i think he wasn't going anywhere with it it was an honest question no, uh, and we at, so first about how, how, yes, go yeah, ahead. A couple of things. Number one, if you'll pull up that picture of Keenan again, um, that is one scary dude. <laughs> For those of you who are watching on the TV program, you can tell. Now, those of you who are driving in your car on the radio, you can't see it, but he's, he's scary. One, one scary dude. Yeah, yeah he's, got the, he's got the face paint on, too, yeah. which makes him look even more so, menacing. Uh, but back to Mike's point. So, yeah, we did get a question, and we actually get this question often. How do we choose the player of the game? Um, or the player of the week, the the stables player of the week. Um, yeah. Our, you okay? <laughs> I love the pretzel bites and stables. <laughs> I do too, but yeah. that's a whole other story. I know it. Um, the, so our, the way we choose our player of the week is different than the coaches or the staff because we see it from a different perspective. Obviously, we're watching game day. We don't go to all the practices and all that sort of thing. So like Mike said, we're we're not only looking for individual play on the field or big plays and that sort of thing, but we also watch, you know, how did they help through the course of the game? What do they do on the sidelines? Are they cheerleading? Are they just kind of sitting around? Now, this is probably for us, uh, the three of us vote, the two announce, whoever the two announcers are for the game and then the engineer, which is always the great Brian Watts. He's always there. So what we do is... <laughs> Yeah. We uh, we vote, but I will tell you at the end of every game because there are so many good things. Even even last week's game, for those of you who were totally decimated, there are so many good things that come out. It is a very difficult thing to try and pick the player of the week. Occasionally, we'll have one standout that's just there's no doubt about it. Like KJ in week one. Yeah, KJ well, Smith. even I'm going last year, and I can't think of it. I, put myself on the spot and then blow it. <laughs> Welcome but to my world. Occasionally you'll have a, a game where there is one player that just runs the, all day, and a, uh, defensively or offensively or whatever, and it's, it becomes a no-brainer. But those are few and far between. Usually it takes a long time, and we, you know, we look – we're look. We're not just look. We do look at the stats, but we also look at what they did, what they did on and off the field, what they do through the course of the game, how did it impact the whole game. There's a whole number of things we do, so we get that question a lot. Always glad to answer it, but it is different than. And I think we're going to talk about this later in the show. It is different than the way the coaches and you guys pick your players of the week. Sometimes, so, yes. I mean, sometimes they, they, the player they overlap, overlaps, right. but the the criteria is different. But I think what, what we talked about off the air, Jim, that was really particularly uh, important, I think, in this week's selection was that Keenan, uh, over the course of the last couple of years, has not always been a starter. And what we noticed over these last two years or so, did I mention, I mentioned this off the air, we didn't talk about this on the air, that he was a guy that you would, you would see on the sideline who is raising his hands up and down and getting everybody pumped up, getting the crowd involved, getting the t his teammates involved. And, uh, and, you, and you see this kind of, the, this kid has just got all the spirit in the world. And then we started seeing him as a starter about midseason last year. Take it from there, yeah, Coach. Yeah, you know, keenan has got a big personality. He is, uh, uh, 
<laughs> that was a drum roll. <laughs> that was awesome. That would be not, Mike Davis. <laughs> not intended, but I loved the sound of that. It sounded like a timpani. That was awesome. Yep. Go uh, ahead, Coach. Um, yeah. So, Ke- Keenan oh. McNally. Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Um, he's got a big personality, and, you know, I think last year – he, uh, it finally clicked for him on what he needed to do and to, to hone in his skills. And I mean, he's a ma- he's he's not only a big he's a big lineman, right? So, um, but he's got great feet. He moves well in space. And you you talked uh, briefly about you know how he was getting downfield and making blocks. And uh, I mean, when that train gets a rolling on him and he gets out into space and you know uh, sets up his blocks or you know and gets gets downfield, he does a great job. He's got great feet. Um, you know, and he's, he's got a great personality. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a disruptive one majority of the time. I think you would laugh at that, but I think he's, uh, he's a, he's a good, good locker room guy and a, and a great guy to have around. And, and he's really come along, um, with his ability and, and understanding, you know, the game of football more. And, and I think, you know, he's, he's had a, had a great year so far and, um, definitely a huge asset for, for the team. And, um, I think his teammates uh, would would definitely agree as well. I mean, he's he's um, you know he had to kind of get mature a little bit, and and when you talk about mid season um, where he, where he kind of came on, and, mm-hmm. and you know he just kind of it finally you know we've talked about it before. It's like just clicks, and and he he was just started to freight train people, and um, really <laughs> I like the sound really, of that. Really yeah. under yeah. you know. What he was capable of doing. Yeah. Could you so. could you imagine? Well, you probably can, but um, you're the <laughs> other team, and you're you go to line up and you look across and you see him and you're like, oh no, oh no, <laughs> I yeah. got to deal with this guy. Hey, your guy, <laughs> yeah, oh, you get in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that right tackle he, position is a is it's a tough side to play. I mean, everybody talks generally talks about the left tackle, but um, I, I've seen him hold uh, defensive ends uh, com- where they can't even get close to the quarterback. I mean, he just does a nice job of protecting whoever is the quarterback. Yeah. 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 It does a nice job out there. Uh, let's go. Let's move on to these other guys. I know uh, we want to talk about the play of the game, but I'd rather talk about uh, these guys that you all selected on your um You've got a defense, offense, and special forces, and also a trench player of the week, a POW. Yeah. This is week three. Uh, let's start with, uh, on defense, uh, we've got Daryl Langford, number 34, who we've mentioned a lot, yeah. and we've seen him uh, play just a- at the linebacker position, uh, and he's a beast. He is. And, uh, and terrific. In fact, I see him out there. When I see the two guys, I don't have my highlighted list, but uh, I see Will Lincoln, because I'm sure, pretty sure that's who it is, 33 and 34, yeah. right? I see both yeah. of those guys out there at the same time and uh, looking good. Too. Yeah. yeah. They, you know, talking on Dar- Darren, he – had a great, you know, he's been he's been a great leader, um, leading that defense, and um, you know he plays hard nosed. I mean, relentless, physical, um, coachable. I mean, and those are those are the things, obviously, you know that 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 you want. But I mean, he's he's just a, a solid player and a, and a and a really good kid. I mean, that's and they all are. But I mean, I, I, he's 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 been a really good example of of somebody who uh you know last year stepped up and and it and clicked and and, and earned a spot and has come into this season he's a uh, wrestler right he, he wrestles. yeah he yeah. wrestles as well yeah he's a focused kid and 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 takes it serious and is you know gets him dialed in and, and ready to go and he's he's good kid. good kid i like that um let's let's get move on here to offense because we actually considered uh with uh, this is uh, Zach Grace, uh, number fourteen, and, and Brian, we had talked about uh, that play that he made, the, and especially the the yards after, after catch, catch, because he was standing that Mike there. Mike refers to as the rack he, when it's really the yak. Well, the, and there there are there is a rack, by the way, Jim. <laughs> so you know, Cue I don't know why music. you need to do that, Jim. Right. I mean, we're trying to talk about Zach Grace here, and, and look what you do. You, just, you spoiled it for Zach. Zach's going to remember this too, Jim, because he'll like me better. <laughs> just know that. You'll know that. Uh, so, but yes, and we talked about how last week 
Zach had done all this work in the gym, you know, in the weight room yeah. last year, and he showed up. What he's and I called him tree trunks, and I talked about it on the on the air too. And I think that was the reason that I probably didn't select that one as our play of the week because I was so sort of focused on his legs. Yeah. And it's like, I, okay, I don't like the sound of that. You know, that just doesn't sound. That's awkward. So I left that off. I just left that out of there. But I we could play it here. Now everybody's going to go. That's that's sick. That's right. <laughs> But uh, maybe not. Let's play it, can we, Brian? <laughs> Cue it up, baby. Let's let's have a listen to this play. It was awesome. Receiver split to the near side, and Acosta is going to roll to his right. Then he throws. Good pass. Caught, and that's number fourteen. Zach Grace, and he broke free from a tackle. He had picked up eight. He turns it into about a pickup of 30. But let me tell you something about Zach Grace. I talked to Coach Gray about him last or yesterday on Coach Gray's show. I talked about all the work that he did over the summer. And I said, you know, you want to tell, you can tell a good football player by the size of their legs, their tree trunks. And I mean, those guys couldn't, that first, that initial hit, uh, I, I got to tell you, man, Zach Grace completely overcame it. And here we are. That wasn't so bad now, was it? No. No, I think, but that was a great play. Yeah. And, and that's a kid that, uh, man, if, if you can get the ball in his he's hands. He's a beast. Oh, my goodness. It's it's kind of thrown us off, though, because he's 14. Yeah, what the year. heck was that? Last you know? year, and we have to stop and think about oh, it. Oh, man. It was disappointing that he's not 87 you know, anymore. It's what he wanted. Oh. <sighs> Come on, Zach. Well, there's a lot of things hey, I want too. But right. Uh, well, you know, he wants he he's gonna make a he's gonna make a name for the number fourteen. <laughs> I hope so. Well, he did good the other day. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Well, uh, nice job by him. Yeah, and, he's uh, a great. Like I said before, I mean, he kid works hard in the weight room, works hard at practice. He doesn't, you know, doesn't take a playoff. I mean, he just goes and is dialed in, and you know, he. It, you look at him, he's a big target. He blocks well. I mean, all the things you want from your tight end. All right, let's move along here. Special Forces, Logan Olson. Let's talk about that guy, too. Yeah. Logan, you know, he's our, our long and short snapper, and he's on quite a few other uh, special teams as well and, and also plays defense, plays defensive end. And, you know, Logan has, has really transformed this year, and, and um, he played some last year. This year he came in. Uh, determined and and you know just has a has a different sense about him and and meaning that you know he comes in and is focused in and it, I know that that gets redundant but I mean it, what a what a kid that last these last two weeks of practice he's come in and he's just been on point and leading and 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 vocal and and you know just done a great job and it, and it showed up on 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 Fridays as well. I mean, he, his snaps have been on point. I mean, and that's a, you know, the long snapper, short snapper um, is a, obviously it's a huge responsibility and a huge, uh, you know, you don't notice them until something right, goes yeah, wrong, exactly. right? Exactly. You know, yes, that, it's that kind of position. It's yeah. that kind of position, but, you know, he gets our timing down, he zings the ball back there and, and does a does a tremendous job and um, not only on that, but but everything else he's done. So he's, he has, has done a great job um, and, and very deserving as well. Yeah, I, I mean, these numbers, 34, 14, 16, and we'll talk about number 70 in a minute here, but these are these are numbers that we, we call quite a bit. You, and you, you you start to see a, a pattern sure. early in the year, the the numbers that you're, you know, that you're referring to when you're making a play call, as, as Jim does the play-by-play, -play, and I follow up with a little bit of, of an observation of what we saw uh, let's talk about in the trenches. We've got Briggs Terwilliger, which I, that's a great name, yeah. isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I mean, once you really discover that, oh, that's easy to say. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's a guy that uh, great uh, name, great I, kid, I, right? You and know. you look, I'm looking at his big smile on his face. He doesn't really look particularly intimidating. No, he's a, he is a big guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. And a great athlete. Let's talk about. Yeah, him. you yep. know, he he is one that just loves the game and um, plays the offensive line for us. Um, plays D line for us as well, and and, and gets some rotation in there. Um, he has got one heck of a motor, and, and you know, you, you look at him like you said, he's got a smile on his face because he loves the game, you know, and loves to play, and and has gone through some adversity, and has has really kind of uh, amped it up and, and ready for his senior year, and and has really done a good job of of being a leader with the line, 
um, and, and as a whole for our team and in the locker room, you know, and um, so, yeah, you, you don't want to cross him. He met that, that smile. I don't know if you have that picture up there right now or not, but that smile can be dece- uh, deceiving. Right. Excuse me. It can be deceiving uh, because he, he, he'll, he'll get off the football and you'll know about it. A little uh, schizophrenic football player there. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, know, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, yeah. You, you got to flip the switch when you're between the lines, you right. know? I mean, Don't cross me. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yes, I know. That is right. Uh, congratulations to all those guys anyway. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, we we have so much fun calling the games. I mean, we do. It's, we look forward to it. And uh, we had uh, Kelly Gentry was in the booth with us oh, last yeah. week. Uh, and he's going to be, uh, he'll be filling in. Jim's got it. Uh, he'll be, he'll be out in, uh, well, this, uh, in two weeks, right? Which uh, I hate seeing, but if we're going to replace Jim for a week with anybody, uh, I can't think of anybody more capable than Kelly, yeah. who's just terrific uh, during the basketball season. He's yeah. a, a terrific guy, but uh, no kidding. It's a labor of love. We, we love Friday nights and we love what we're doing here. We're getting ready to take a break. Let's come back. Uh, I want to, I want to talk about our, play of the game and uh, we'll be back right back you're listening to the coach gray show stay with us programming include these fine businesses. I'm Sean Barber, owner of Stables Local Kitchen and Patio in Kearney. Stables is a Kearney thing. We are all about our Kearney community. We love to be the place where people get together. Stables features a full menu with a scratch kitchen, offering lunch and dinner options. Stables has been a proud member of the Kearney community for almost 20 years, and we are very appreciative of the ongoing support from this wonderful community. You can check us out online at stables816.com, and Stables is part of the True 816 family. Eat, drink, local. Celebrate fall with the Holiday Trio. Bees Flowers and Gifts is offering three months of unique flower arrangements to share and celebrate those special months of October, November, and December. Each bouquet features a seasonally themed assortment delivered in a charming holiday vase. The Holiday Trio is now available at Bees Flowers and Gifts, 100 West Washington Street in Kearney, 816-628-6811, and their website is beesflowers.com. Bees, your first choice for flowers. Yeah, man, I like that. Yeah, that bumper music kind of gets you going, doesn't it, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are listening to the Coach Gray Show, in case you didn't know it, but I think you did. Uh, every Thursday during football season, we do this, and uh, we've been doing this, what, Jim, four years? Four, right? five years? I've lost track. I have lost, years. I've yeah. lost track. And uh, I, gosh. More you, math. Do, yeah, <laughs> you're right. my understanding there would be no math. Do, <laughs> did you remember? I, I'm trying to think back on... Three years ago? I think this is our fourth year, fourth year having you on the air. Yeah. I don't think coach we Gray. did it the first year. And I remember when you first came in here as a brand new young coach and <laughs> you were all nervous. No, I'm just kidding. He wasn't nervous. <laughs> no excuses. So, so right here. That's right. You want to talk about one legged quarterbacks for a while? <laughs> right. That was fun. I do remember that. I uh, know. That was then, a good time. And then, the, was, yeah, that, there was lots of stuff. Let's uh, <laughs> listen. We have a play of the game that I think was was instrumental and could have potentially been a. It was a turnover. Let's put it that way. But uh, Bees Flowers does the. Uh, they sponsor this play of the game, and uh, thank you to them. But if you got that queued up, Brian, I, I, this this was a a great play that came at really a good time. Uh, but let's go ahead. We'll play it, and then we'll talk about it.
Hedgecourt is uh, seeing that Nitch can uh, move around. He lined up on the far side, then the near side. Now he's back on the near side, but there are two other receivers on the far side. Now we're going to hand off up the middle. There's Sig, but brought down. Oh, no. The ball's on the ground. Looks like, Looks like Carney has it. it. Yes. And they do. This is what happens when your defense is swarming into the backfield. And I mean, I couldn't tell. Somebody got their hand on that ball. Looks to me like maybe number 71 got that, Jim. That was Carter Schmidt. I think 13, um, Joe Marshall came Schmidt. up with it. Yep. But uh, that, that was a nice job of, a, of at least three purple jerseys in the backfield. Listen, that turnover could be really valuable. That's what you want. Uh, okay, that's great. Still playing. So great. We were, we're still trying to figure out who actually knocked the ball loose. So the problem is there's too many guys together at one time. Right. Uh, we that was a scrum. pile. It was we a just scrum. down with a yeah. rule where you can only have two or three guys. Because <laughs> Mike uh, and I were trying to figure out, we were looking at each other going, who did I? I yeah, well, yeah. you do. And you start seeing numbers peeling off of this yeah. big pile of guys, and it's 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 just a mass of humanity. I like how you talked about the swarm there. Swarming, swarming defense, the baby. Purple swarm. It was. And that was, uh, I mean, that wasn't the only time it happened, but in this particular case, Somebody knocked the ball free. I think Darren Langford was in on that. Oh, okay, on, cool. On, on that, uh, I know he's in on that play. And, yeah, and that's. I mean, that's yeah, what you want, obviously. You want. And I, sorry, Captain Ready? Obvious. I know. Of course, that's what you want. <laughs> but nonetheless, at a time like that, when we were trailing, I mean, we saw some. There, there were times when we had great opportunities, and I think that was one of them. Although I think, looking back on it. Uh, we may perhaps have lost the ball the very next play on that one, and uh, heartbreaker, but it happens. But nonetheless, uh, it's a great example, Coach, I think, of the way your team, this team, keeps playing, keep playing. hard. Yes. Keep yes. playing, and that's, you know, going through, and then, like I said before, I mean, things are going to happen to you during a game that, that don't go your way or you, whatever happens. You know, it doesn't go your way. You make a mistake or whatever. You got to be able to overcome that and and get back and and continue to fight and continue to play. And um, you know, our guys have a lot of pride in themselves and and what they do and and pride in the in in the program and in the team. And you know, they're they're not going to give up. They're going to continue to battle. They're going to continue to fight. Um, you know, some things obviously didn't go our way, but you know, it it says a lot about our guys and about our team and about where we are of, um, of buy-in and, and working and knowing, hey, we, we're, we're better than this. We're going to continue to work. We're going to continue to, to, to move on, and um, good things are going to happen. And, and that's what you got to do. And that's, you know, you got to uh, continue to uh, show up to work and, and, and get it done. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's where we're at. I agree. Um, we've got Ruskin this week. Uh, all right, Jim, did did you have any other any other players or any, anything you want to bring to? No, uh, I was going to talk but just real briefly. I was going to say it was really good to be back in a full stadium oh, yeah. and the support of the Carney faithful. And we talked a little bit about this at the opening of the show. You, you kind of, I don't know, you you almost take it for granted because it happens every year. We fill the stadium, but um, <clears throat> when we travel around, there are so many places, schools where nobody shows up. I mean, maybe a few parents show up because their kid's playing. But I've literally seen them where they show up to pick the kid up after the game. They don't even go to the game. Right. So the support of the Carney faithful is, is tremendous. And we were talking about it when we were listening to the replays. In the background, it sounds like almost like we're at Arrowhead. I mean, <laughs> you, it sounds like there's 10,000 people out yeah, there. Yeah, that's great. To, I mean, that support is huge. And it, it the, the crowd cheering and, and, and being loud and, and all of that, it is uh is is such a huge <laughs> mike's mike's over here watching oh, video oh, 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 okay. clearly <laughs> so one time my computer has got the volume up jim dickerson who did it already today once thank you pot i'm the kettle thank you uh so go ahead coach. But yeah no yeah. it's just it's <laughs> It's Don't great to Mike have that, you. you know. It, I was kind of digging the music. I thought Brian was going to pop on there with some kind of a drop I, so I thought, on the crowd yeah, noise. I and it was too. like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> nope, nope, that was Nothing. me. <laughs> but it's great to have that support. And it's, you know, the, the kids appreciate it. And that's what, you know, they appreciate it. And they, they love playing hard for their for their town, for their community, for the school, and, uh, and for each other. And 
um, that, that support is huge. Okay. Uh, the reason I, I, this is the reason my computer was, uh, it just, they start playing these videos on Max Preps, but I wanted to look at Ruskin here and it, they, wow, uh, they crushed Ruskin beat Wyandotte in their opener, uh, 32 to, no, it wasn't, it was a close game, 32 yeah. to 30. And then it was the next game, it was Ruskin versus Belton, 51 to 14. It was lopsided, man. I, you know, that's just the way high school football goes from time to time, as we know. Uh, but beyond what little I see here on their max preps, and just uh, to be side, clear, yeah. Ruskin lost fifty-one to fourteen, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I beg yeah, your yeah. pardon. Yes, okay. and uh, but all that to say, you, you, listen, you can't sleep on any of these guys. No, that's a and, yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm happy we get a shot at somebody that's not ranked top number one or so in the state. But yeah, let's talk about. They, them. you know, they're a very athletic team, and they've got a lot of speed. Um, their quarterback is very mobile. Um, they've got a big offensive line, uh, and and their, their their running back is is very elusive. And you know, I think that's uh, for us defensively speaking, we've got to make sure that that we keep them hemmed up. We are solid tacklers that we're uh, doing things, you know, defensively to to keep the uh, eliminate the big play. And, and that, you know, as has happened to us a few times uh, over the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, eliminating the big play is, is going to be huge for us and um, because they do have a lot of speed and, and a lot of athleticism. And, um, you know, and offensively, you know, their defense, they'll bring some pressures at different times. And, um, you know, I think for us it's, it's about assignment football and, and doing your job um, offensively and, and getting off the ball and smacking them in the mouth. Uh, right from the start and, and being able to sustain that uh, for four quarters. I mean, and um, we've shown we've shown that at times, like we, like we t we've talked about, and and we we need to make sure we're finishing that and 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 do that and be be consistent with it. So, but it's a good football team, um, and you know, just like you said, you don't ever overlook anybody, and our guys definitely haven't. Um, uh, each it's each week is a is an important week. Yeah, I think that's right, um, and and of course it, it's an away game uh, for you guys. So bring those cowbells out. Right, get bring out the cowbells with, out. Bring the cows to with you too. Yes, I mean because we can fill the Tomorrow stadium. At seven. Yes, that's right. And that's uh, perplexing for me because that's my alma mater. Mm. So you're going you don't back care, into Jim. my homeland. <laughs> Your homeland. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> So, Are you going to be wearing a Ruskin letter jacket? <laughs> well, sadly, uh, first I of would all, hope not. <laughs> yeah, it, it wouldn't fit the way the way you probably. I, I mean, I look pretty um, <clears throat> muscular and whatnot now, but my letter jacket is. So, how you been? Yeah, Everything man. good? <laughs> oh, you know. Um, I love Thursdays I at noon. <laughs> I do. And you reach a point in these shows, yeah, you know, that you just yeah, – there's not a yeah. whole lot more we yeah, can talk there about. You go. Well, you know, when, when I was at Ruskin, they didn't have I, – I think they have an artificial surface now, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have that stuff yeah. out there. Now Jim has artificial teeth. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you play football, Jim? Not in high school, yeah. no. I did play football for a while, but no. Um, it, it's a scary sport. Before uh, or after high school did you play football? It was during, but it wasn't in for the high school team, I, I see. if okay. that makes sense. So we had, Somewhat, yeah. Do they even do that anymore? They had... We had Intramural. Yeah, yeah. I, it wasn't really called that. It was a, um independent league. I don't mm. know. Oh, I, don't, I see. I okay. can't even remember yeah. what it was called, but... Um, yeah. yeah, and I did baseball the same way. I didn't play for the high school. I Why did you hate your alma mater? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I didn't hate my alma I actually like my alma mater. Thank you very much. Uh, it's just the opportunities that afforded me the I got you. Uh, ability to grow as an I athlete, or, <laughs> as, uh, it, as it were. Um, but, so, so how long... How Far of a drive is it to Ruskin High School? Well, I can answer 30, that, Mike. 30 minutes. <laughs> Mike, I can tell you that it's a 37 and a half minutes from, if you take Yeah, the, from Carney. Yeah, yeah. could get okay. on the interstate and take 35, and of course you'll go uh, south, and uh, you'll cross the river. <laughs> where are, are we going? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, know. Just, I, I don't know where we're at. I, I turned it over to you. So, yeah. Well, so who's the... 
I come out of know. Who's the coach? Or do you know? Perkins, the, I believe. At Ruskin? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know him. The Golden Eagles. Now, that part I do know. The yep. Ruskin, Kansas City, Missouri varsity football team lost Friday's home non-conference game against Belton. Yeah, I wanted to make that clear. They got smoked. 51-14, to 14, ouch. Yeah. So what, what can we look forward to tomorrow? Any trick plays you want to tell us about? Yes, of course, I guess if you tell us, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, a trick be much play, trick, would it? Would it? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> for us, it's about consistency, and you know, I uh, don't have a trick play anything up our sleeve there. You wouldn't tell us uh, anyway. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> At least not right now. I can tell you, Ruskin doesn't have a one-legged quarterback. Nope. No. I can tell you nope. that. Sure nope. that. That's correct. That is uh, correct. But you know, it's about us coming out and doing where we're, what we know we're capable of doing, and you know, I think. Think we're ready. I know we're you ready, ready to roll. go. Yeah. Ready to go. We are ready. To well, go. you know, in, in all seriousness, we talked after the game uh, with Kelly uh, as we did the post game show. I was, we, in fact, Kelly brought it up. He said, "You know, really, when you look at it, the Bulldogs' schedule was front loaded to two of the toughest teams in the state." And I don't, you know, you there, no, I get it, no excuses. That's right. But man, when you got to line up against these guys, and uh, we know we're familiar with both teams, with Platte County and with Smithville. We know what they're capable of, and we know, that, you know, we know what they are, and you know, crown them. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, uh, we knew who they were. That's right, exactly. I, I would, but, I would like to. I mean, it would have been interesting. Maybe they'll do it next year to. To come out of the gate and have to play Platte County and Smithville right out of the gate. It would have been nice to play someone where you could kind of get your legs going. Yeah. Plus, you lost the Jamboree. We talked about that before. And then you lost the first game. And I don't mean lost, but you didn't get to play right. it. It would have been nice to have Platte County and Smithville a little deeper down the schedule. But they didn't ask me when they wrote the <laughs> yeah. schedule. Nor did they me. <laughs> but that's, so, yeah, but, but that, that's okay. I, I you're going to get that. You're going to have to play them. And, and, right. you know, and like I said, no excuses on that. We're, you know, but. The bottom line is when it's when we get through the season and continue to go through here um, over this next stretch um, that we're ready to go when it's when it's playoff time and and our you know uh, we got everything clicking on all cylinders and and we're rolling and uh, and that what that takes to do that is each week getting improvement and that's where we at that's where we're at and I you know like I said from week one to week two um, saw a lot from from summer practice. First day of practice to week one saw a lot of growth. Um, that's what you got to do. I mean, that's well, well not uh, to well, mention the fact that you played against two really good teams. Right. So you got to you got to practice against the best. Right. And uh, we know both of those teams were Platte solid Cat football teams. Yeah, yeah. Platte County was in a state championship. Right. I don't know if Smithville last didn't, year. Quite, didn't quite make it. There. Yeah, but, but Platte County was last year. Right. Wasn't it? Right. Yeah. And Smithville was the year before. Right. And, and yeah. they and they were darn close last year. But all that to say, I mean, you talk about live practice. Uh, I mean, against the best that's out there, uh, that can't hurt. That's right. And uh, and you take that with you, and you you then. You know, when you That's go down the road, to, however you get to Ruskin, Jim, I don't know how you get there, but you do. Uh, but anyway, get those cowbells out there, by the way. That's you right. Know, get, them, get them down to Ruskin and uh, start ringing them. Ring them. Yep, absolutely. Got about a minute to go here, Coach. Anything that uh, any, it, you want to leave with us? No? I, you know, I, I just – We, we ask I, the I questions think, and yeah. you answer them. That's <laughs> how it works, yeah. That's about how that goes. Uh no, I just I, we're we're excited. We're we're definitely ready to get back out on the out on the field Friday and um, and continue to improve. And I, th I agree. I think that's you know that our they're just we're we're ready to go. And yep, yeah, that's a, I, I I know it. And and in, in life, yeah. there there are certain things you want to put behind you. That's right. And uh, but learn from them. Yes, I mean, that's the, the key is yes. You can go through all these hard things, and and the most important piece is that you learn from it and you grow from it. Right. And, and continue to continue to get better. Yep, uh, we appreciate you uh, so much for being with us here and the Coach Gray Show on our fourth year. We think, <laughs> and uh, but it is it's always yeah. a lot of fun, and uh, we enjoy it, and I think our audience does too. It's uh, it is clearly one of our most popular programs on one hundred two point seven FM, and uh, and plus we get the video aspect of it, which is really cool. So listen, you folks. 
Get with us next week on the Coach Gray Show, and uh, we'll talk about some exciting things, I promise you. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you then.